Ah, okay. Hello, everybody that is currently tuned in. I am Silent Doom, and I am here to do a little, a little texture modding demonstration, essentially. Um, if you guys are interested in texture modding for Smash 4 yourselves, uh, this isn't the place to start. I would recommend going to other tutorials that show you how to actually extract the files necessary for texture modding. And uh, yeah, go to stuff like uh, that's that Smash 4 Modders tutorial. Uh, there's also a pretty good tutorial on Styles X2's channel by uh, Nova One Duke that shows you, uh, you know, the process of extracting stuff, uh, editing it, and putting it in game. What this is for is basically uh, showing a sort of more artistic process. Uh, you know, I I do not claim myself at all to be a particularly amazing uh, modder or artist, but I'm decent enough, and I have a little, I have a few tricks here and there. Uh, the most recent one that I made was uh, a Scalomania texture over Falcon. You can check that out on Game Banana. It looks like uh, this, and uh, there's a shot on the back. All right, so as I said, I am not the greatest texture modder in the world, but I do have my share of tricks that I employ. All right, so I've already extracted all the textures. I've extracted both Falcons as well as my own uh, my own textures for Scalomania, which are uh, these ones here. Uh, these four and these four. These aren't all the textures for both characters, but I simply just extracted the most notable ones uh, and the most relevant ones for this. All right, so one of the first things that you're going to want to do, you're going to have your texture map and then you're going to have the equivalent normal map. Usually it's numbered one higher than uh, your texture map. That's not always the case though. Uh, for those of you who don't know, by the way, I'm working in uh, Photoshop CS6. You should also be able to do a lot of this in Paint.net. I'm not sure exactly how much, as I have never used Paint.net, but uh, a lot of it should be similar. But there are probably some pitfalls that you might run into if you want to do some more uh, complex, detailed texture modding. So as I was saying, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your normal map and drag it over on top of your texture map. You're then going to want to control U, remove all the saturation, and then change its layer style to either multiply or overlay. Either works depending on uh, how you want it to look. I'm going to use multiply for this one. Uh, not color burn, multiply. So you get a sort of overlay and what this does is uh, it highlights to you much better where all the main points of your texture are. And this is obviously very important because in order to work with your texture properly, you, you need to know where everything is. So Falcon has a pretty, you know, pretty clean, straightforward texture map, barring a couple of places. Obviously, um, you know, this is his chest. This is obviously his back. These are his uh, legs. These are this is the back. This is the front. Uh, this is his arm. This right here, I'll get to in a second. Uh, these are his outside and inside of his gloves, his scarf textures, uh, collar, and a few other things here and there. Like these little straps are straps within his boots. A good thing to do, also very important thing to do, in my opinion, is to have the reference to your the character that you're editing have the render of your character to the side so here I have Falcon and uh, yeah this is all the clothing stuff on Falcon as opposed to the metal stuff so we won't see the boots or anything in this texture or the helmet but you can use this render to compare stuff back and forth like this is obviously the upper part of the arm uh, the glove even which you can see here Uh, this is his belt. 
and there's various bits of his belt. His belt kind of has two layers to it, which you can't really see in the render. Uh, you can see it there. There's uh, two segments of the belt. And there's just various uh, buckles. The little green straps are for his holster. Yeah, so you guys get the gist of that. So from here, basically, you know, you have free reign. I like to uh, also make this a different layer as well as duplicate it. That way, if you make any critical mistakes, you can uh, you just r remove the layer and rectify them. Now, I have a handful of main tools that I like to use throughout uh, throughout this process. Uh, the magic wand tool is one of them. Uh, you can shortcut to it with the W key. Uh, obviously the brush tool to paint stuff on. Uh, and then I have a few others. Eraser tool obviously. Eyedropper. Lasso. Selecting sections. You know, it's all, it's all pretty straightforward. Alright, so... We can do a quick recolor. The good thing about Smash 4 textures is that because they're very straightforward, um, as you can see, without the uh, the normal map overlaid, it's just a block color. Unlike in Brawl, where everything had to be detailed in, uh, this works with pretty much just blocking out the colors, and then the normal map does a lot of the uh, heavy lifting in terms of detail. Let's say we want to color all of this. This will color his uh, his jumpsuit or whatever color I want. So I'll control you, just adjust the hue, whatever. Let's make it yellow. I like to colorize as well. That makes it much easier to pick the direct color. Make it nice and bright yellow. Maybe not this bright, maybe a little less saturated. That should be good. Make his scarf like, I don't know. Make his scarf blue. What's a good color complement to uh, yellow? Yellow's color complement, I believe, is purple. Yeah, it's red, green, blue, orange, yellow, purple terms of your primary color complements. A little something to know, I guess. I mean, this is just, you know, an example of uh, looking at stuff. That's the basic idea. And then, of course, if you want to select areas with a bit more precision, you have the lasso tool zoom in. Like if I want to select this area specifically, I want a jaggedy jag round. I don't know. I do something like this. That's obviously very rough and ugly. But yeah, that's that's a general idea. All right, and then of course you have your brush tool, uh, painting stuff on. When I use the brush tool. Typically, I like to work on another layer because uh, I'll get to why I do that in a second. Well, not a second, a little later. All 
I'm drawing with a mouse, so I, I apologize for how crude this is. But yeah, essentially, uh, when I like to work on a separate layer, as I said, as it makes it easier to just work around. And if I make a mistake here, I don't have to erase the actual map. One thing I like to do with the brush tool to uh, use a little bit more precision as I'm uh, drawing with the mouse is I like to shift click. It makes it a little bit jaggedy, but a way to get around that is then to erase the more hard edges. Uh, so like if I was to redraw that smiley, I'd do it more like this. Uh, I'd probably do it a little bit more. Uh... Yeah. Undoing stuff as well. Undo in uh, CS6 is Control Alt Z instead of just Control Z. Control Z just takes you a step backwards and it's not very good. <laughs> That kind of gets a, a general idea. Okay, so. As I mentioned before, one of the most important things to do is to understand your texture map. Every character has a different one, of, of course, and knowing how your texture map works is critical for creating clean textures, of course. Uh, Captain Falcons, as I said before, has a relatively straightforward one. The only really odd one about Falcons texture is this section right here. This section is essentially, what this section is, it's the right side of his upper body, the front of his upper body. As you can see here, there's a cutoff. There's a cutoff with his uh, with his pec and his like his uh, the right side of his abs, because this is where you know this collar comes. This is the transitioning period of that. This section here is uh, this area. And how it maps is this area here, this area here is his underarm, and this area here, this side is uh, the side that connects to his uh, upper body. That's like the most complex, that's the most awkward part of, uh, of Falcon's map. And I had to uh, basically do a little bit of uh, guesswork in order to get that, well, it, I don't have a really good shot of it here. I think I have another. Yeah, I do. This shot should be better to show it off. Yeah, as you can see, it transitions pretty well here. That's because I was able to, uh, you know, properly rotate and adjust the, uh, the texture. I essentially cut and paste it and then adjusted it here so that it could transition more smoothly. As you can see on my own texture, I have it split into uh, quite a few things. So I've got the, uh, as I said, the duplicate main texture here. There's actually a couple of mistakes on this texture that I uh, I rectified in the actual thing, but it's a 
minor thing. Like, these should not be red, and uh, these should be. This and this should be red. But yeah. So here, this, this layer obviously is the normal map underneath. I believe it's actually the old normal map. This is the normal map of Falcon as opposed to the Skullo Falcon uh, normal map. Uh, and then I have here are the buttons I edited uh, here, little dot buttons, uh, the lower bones, so the ones on his legs, uh, the first set of upper bones, which is all of this, and upper bones two, which is this stuff here, which I did for his arm and his uh, upper body. Now with the upper bones two. It won't map exactly, but it's a pretty good approximation if I were to rotate this and drag it over here. As you can see, uh, it fits into place decently well. Not exactly, but you know, that's fine. It fits properly where it needs to. Let me, uh... Yeah. So basically what I did in order to do all of this, um, I kept as closely to the reference as I could. I kept as closely to the references as I could. Um, so I had uh, various pictures of Skullomania. This was really helpful. I managed to find uh, a shot that showed off his back. Um, that showed like a, a kind of orthographic of the full character. That was a very helpful reference. Um, it's for, It was for the older design of Skullomania. But yeah. Uh, obviously this is also his Street Fighter EX design which I base the front off of, as you can see here. This one is his EX2+, uh, Plus, or his EX3 design. This was the primary basis, that's why I went for the... the Kamen Rider gloves and boots, as opposed to the uh, skeletal ones that he has here, as well as the S on his... on the top of his head. And this is just another reference, a more full body reference, so that I could get the belt in. So pretty much the process of this was uh, carefully painting on everything onto the texture map, uh, no. coloring it like so. Pretty much doing a, uh, pretty much doing this with all the, with all the bones. And all the shapes. I'm pressing, uh, if, if you don't know the hotkeys, I'm pressing B for brush and uh, the uh, square brackets in order to make the brushes uh, bigger and smaller. And with the zoom in, I'm just dragging uh, with the pressing Z for zoom and then dragging it left and right. Yeah, so I do stuff like this and I try and... Uh, meticulously match the shape as much as I could. And the reason why it uh, flows round well uh, when coming round to the back was because essentially what I did was um, I started the top of this from the uh, the top of like this rib from the bottom of this one and then brought it around. This is approximately what it looks like on the back here. It's not exactly the same, but you know, there's room for artistic license, I guess. There's actually a slight flaw. I didn't fill this in fully, but that's fine. You don't see that in game. Yeah, whatever. I just noticed that. <laughs> Uh, 
And yeah, um, as you can see here with the gloves, unlike Falcon's gloves, uh, you can see the various uh, the details even without this texture map. You can see obviously he has the uh, little Falcon here. This is obviously different colors. I kept this all as one color, again, to better match uh, Scholar Mania's gloves. Yeah, uh, that was another little mistake here, this little brown thing, but I fixed that all in the actual stuff. I will get to this after, uh, that's a normal map. Editing that uh, is its own little adventure. Oh gosh, I did not want to do that. Yeah, okay, so this is the second texture map. This is for basically all the metal elements of Falcon. As you can see, it's the same here. We got his uh, knee guard. I'll get the normal map real quick, which is this one. Sometimes with the normal maps, uh, you'll have to scale them to the proper size. This one, for instance, I believe is twice as big as the uh, texture. Yep. So you just uh, control T to transform. And you can just scale it back down to uh, the necessary size. Same as before. Remove the saturation and put its layer style to multiply. Again, or overlay depending on the, like the brightness of your texture. And yeah, as we as as we have here, we can see uh, that's obviously his uh, boot, the front of his boot. This is obviously his helmet. This goes to the inside, that's the side of his helmet, and that is the front strip. So uh, this bit is different to the sides. It's worth noting that his mirror, his uh, his helmet is mirrored. Uh, oops, his helmet is mirrored. So this is the same on the left as it is the right. This is actually why I chose not to put the S of Scholomania on his head, on the helmet. I chose to put it on the little falcon because obviously a S is an asymmetrical letter, it's, it's not symmetrical. Uh, these two are his, uh, his shoulder pad, the top and bottom parts of his shoulder pad. These are obviously the front of his boots, uh, the, the lower parts of his boots kind of unwraps like that. Uh, this I believe is just a strap on his boot. This is his kneecap. These are for the gun. And yeah, that's pretty much it. His face is on a different texture. That's the underside of his boot and that's the belt buckle. All right, so all the stuff that I explained before in terms of editing this, it's the same. Like with the Scholar Mania texture, um, over here. Obviously, as you can see on the Scullo Falcon, I don't have the uh, the Falcon details anymore. This is something that you'll notice on pretty much every other Falcon texture. Uh, it will still have those there, and that's because uh, the uh, that one. This is engraved into the normal map, so it's all it's sh it's shaded in regardless, even if you try and remove it in terms of the texture. Again, the uh, normal map that's being used here is Falcons as you can see from the shin guard there and obviously the, uh, the buckle all right now in my opinion comes on to we move on to what is the more tedious slightly harder part of um, editing the texture and that is uh, adjusting the normal map. Now, the key thing to note with the normal map is that in order to adjust it, we have to go in and adjust its alpha channel. This is where I'm not sure you can do this in paint.net. I just know that you can do it in Photoshop CS6 and you can't do it in like elements. So in order to get the alpha map, we just click on it here, uh, control A, select everything. Control C and then Control V onto a different layer. So now we have the alpha map and we can see all the shading. The dark parts here are pretty much where uh, stuff would rest. So like here, the belt would rest on around this part of Falcon's body. And then here on the back. Uh, here is where the holster would rest. And I believe the gun is in here. 
and then you just yeah you have uh, stuff like that uh, what is that texture again I need to remind myself oh yeah that's the scarf I believe this part is the scarf and this is obviously not only where the shading is but uh, where the overall texture is as you can see there's like this grain this sort of grainy texture for Falcon suit that uh, probably not best to see there comes across here obviously there's a sort of grain to his suit because it's a uh, I'm gonna guess they probably tried to make it like a like a leathery suit so yeah now if we compare this to uh, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. yep if we compare this to my Scholomania map um, the alpha map for that, which I have, I will hide all of this, and I have it here. You can see all the various edits that I've made. Um, this was the key reason as to why I was saying you should want you want to work with your brush stuff on a different layer, because by working on a different layer with the brush stuff uh, here, as you can see, the bones are all on uh, different layers. It makes it easy to just uh, drag and drop this stuff into into here and then edit how you need to whereas if you don't work on separate layers you have to try and use like magic magic wand or selection tool and try and cut and paste with that and it's just it's all very uh inelegant with how you want to work with it uh i have in this psd i i have basically uh, merged all the layers for this onto uh, this layer and you can see what I've done is basically I've uh, embedded the bones into this very simple you just use a, a layer effect you double click and I have it here like uh, bevel and emboss I decided to use a uh, pillow emboss I think that worked nicely for what I wanted just gives everything a little bit more depth to the skeleton. It just means that it's not completely flat. And then you can uh, tweak the settings here and there. Um, in this instance, it might be nicer to uh, just show you exactly. All right, so you can see adjust the size of the emboss and the softness of it. Obviously, you don't want it too big because otherwise it just looks hideous. Like, what is this? Nice small ones are generally what you want for this kind of thing. But in addition to adding the obviously uh, the obvious element of the bones, I have removed the little falcon that was here. Uh, this was a more tedious process. Basically what I did was I made use of the clone stamp tool, which is... Uh, actually, no, that's not that's not true. Uh, not for this one. For this one, I did it a different way. Often, the clone stamp tool is useful for this kind of thing, but I felt that this detail was a bit too big, and so the clone stamp tool would be a kind of cumbersome process. Uh, clone stamp tool, you can access by pressing S. Uh, the way you work this tool is you press Alt on the place you want on the sort of distance from where you want to clone stamp so like here and uh, and then you just work your brush and as you can see there's a tiny you might be able to see there's a tiny little cursor following uh, my brush to the bottom right and that is basically showing where it's uh, where on the texture it is uh, clone stamping from so that's a way to do it but in this instance I didn't actually do it that way what I instead did obviously working on the new layer was I created a big patch of grey that covered all of this an approximate patch of grey it's gonna be uh, inelegant of course
actually, I didn't, uh, whoop. I actually, uh, outlined it, so this is probably a cleaner way to do it. Again, you don't need to be exact, but this way, uh, using the lasso tool, you get a nice, uh, a more precise selection, so that you don't have to do anything, uh, you don't have to do more extraneous cleanup. Right, almost there. Alright, cool. So here you can use the, uh, the paint bucket tool. Boom. And then from here what I did was I uh, smudge, I smudge the edges generally. Smudge the edges a bit. Just to make it a little bit softer. Uh, for reference, I'm doing all of this on a mouse. You can use a tablet if you want, whatever's comfortable for you. I use a tablet when I'm drawing, but I, I don't do too much digital drawing. Uh, but when I do do digital drawing, I use a tablet. But for texture, texture work, I actually often like to use a mouse. That's just me though. I'm just kind of comfortable with this. Different strokes for different uh, different strokes for different folks. All right, and then what I did here, uh, sometimes you're going to need to find a texture online to kind of match this sort of grain. It won't be exact, obviously, but uh, what I did, since it worked uh, quite effectively, is I went into Filter Gallery, and I used a film grain filter. Uh, I don't want it too high. One should do. And as you can see, that gives me an approximate grain of what I had here. And then from here, uh, gradually adjusting the opacity back and forth so I could get a general idea of where the actual muscle shading is, uh, I used the burn and dodge tools uh, to kind of match the general shading here. The burn and dodge tools uh, you can access via here or using the O button. And you want to keep the exposure for your burn and dodge uh, stuff, you want, it to, you want to keep it low. Uh, Nothing higher than like 20%, I'd say. For dodge, you can have it a bit higher, but for burn, you definitely don't want anything higher than uh, 20%. I might lower it to 15. All right, so you're gonna start by working on like the big strokes. Kind of big general uh, placements of things. And then from there, you can work on the more fine, precise strokes. As you can see, uh, this allows us to get a more. exact look obviously I've done it a little crudely here but uh, I did a better job on the actual texture So, you know, it's not exact, but it's, it's something like that, basically. Um, 
and then the dodge just to Probably need a bit more burn in areas. Again, this isn't like the optimal way to do anything. This is just a way. This is just a, a process that you could consider uh, doing. It works quite well for me. Uh, you may also want to uh, check out other artists, uh, like more artistic textures. Uh, Sean Hicks is very, very good. I, uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend you guys check out his stuff he was the one who worked on the mario and luigi style mario as well as the yoshi as well and he's also done a, a stage mod that he did uh, i think he collaborated with uh, dsx8 and he worked on this really nice uh, adjustment to uh, congo jungle yeah he's really good but this is, uh, you know, you get the general idea, kind of, uh, it's not the nicest, but it gives a pretty decent look. For other things, you might just even want to use the brush tool. Uh, you could probably get away with that in certain areas. Uh, less so for this map. Oh, actually, no, I kind of did it here. Like, for example, here, if I wanted to remove this little, this little patch here, you can just use the, I could just use the brush tool and just brush over because there's no there isn't really much in the way of texture here Ooh. and then of course we go back to our friend the burn tool Much tool. Yeah, that pretty much covered it. And I did this uh, in various places on the uh, Skull and Minion map. As you can see, uh, obviously, I've done a, I've done a bit of a better job uh, getting the muscle definition here. cleared that I cleared the top of this I think again I use the same kind of grain technique it's a uh, you can just about see it and yeah those are the main things I left all of this I probably should have removed these little falcons but they're so hard to see there's such a deep such a minor detail that it's not really too big of a deal all right so You've done your edits to your alpha map, uh, for your, to the alpha channel stuff. So basically what you want to do now is you want to select copy and then paste it all back into the alpha channel. Obviously I have edited it already so you can't see the changes but I promise you that I have pasted it in. <laughs> and then from here you can, uh, uh, I don't want this visible. From here, you can then work on your actual, uh, the normal map itself. Uh, this isn't completely necessary, but I like to do it anyway, just for absolute cleanliness. Uh, as you can see, I've made all the uh, proper changes here. Um, with regards to uh, getting the colors right, I guess, because obviously this you're no longer working with grayscale stuff, you're working with a uh, color, you're working with this blue. Generally, uh, you'll want to use, well, not always, but often you'll want to use uh, different layer styles. These all don't use... Uh, that curious yeah these all don't actually use uh, normal they use uh, the bones use darken quite interestingly not one that you'll often opt for but it came out nicer than multiply uh, because the bones are white so yeah 
multiply gives this and it kind of deadens the look so i think darken is much better because you know i'm not really trying to look for the definition of the bones themselves i'm just trying to look for the outlines of them hence why i also did the bevel overlay gives this we don't want that we don't want any kind of bright residue like that so darken was the best option here again what you want to do is just experiment with your uh, layer styles and try and find what's best and for the buttons i used a uh, multiplier the little buttons here which uh are shown on the belt here they look a little flat actually they didn't come out as nice as uh, i would have liked but what can you do Yeah, I uh, I had to just make various sorts of adjustments to places to kind of get the various adjustments that I made to the alpha layer uh, and probably apply them here. It's not perfect again, but it, uh, it more than gets the job done. Like here you can see uh, this isn't done as immaculately as it could have been. Uh, the gloves, there's definitely flaws here. It's a bit gaping, but it's not too... It's not too problematic. The key thing is just to try and cover up those details as best you can, making use of, uh, as I said before, the dodge and uh, burn tools, as well as the smudge. Smudge is very useful. Uh, Gaussian blur as well. That's another useful one. That just helps soften areas and uh, yeah. That's pretty much what I did. Now for this map, uh, Again, a lot of the same stuff applied. The main thing that's different, of course, is the uh, the boots, the uh, front part of the boots. Here, obviously, you have the uh, the little falcon thing and how it's uh, scratchy here and stuff. You have this kind of indent, which you don't see on this really, but it's it's an indent on the back of his boots that is not present on here. The indent is gone. So what I did for here, it was a a little bit of a cheap, cheap and cheerful technique, I guess you could say. Was uh, first of all, I covered. Uh, well, I'll show you in the alpha map. Uh, then of course, turn all these off. First of all, I covered uh, what was on the shin guards before. I covered them with uh, pretty much a, just a flat grey. I then used dodge and uh, burn to uh, adjust the shading. Here I made sure to select these parts to make them dark because this is where the straps of his uh, the little straps here come around. So those need to be darkened. And then what I did after that was I got a, uh, a leather texture from, from the internet, you know, picked up one of those and then applied it here. You can definitely see the, uh, the texture, uh, how the texture looks uh, here. It's pretty, pretty obvious. You get the sense of uh, scratchiness. In retrospect, the effect isn't as nice as one would hope, but uh, yeah. This is uh, definitely something that you could, uh, one could touch up on. But it still uh, gives you the general idea of how it's going to, uh, of the texture that I want. Next time I guess I'll go for something softer, something less uh, stark. But I, I did want to kind of get the scratches across that you can see on, uh, on here. But again, it's a bit too uh, high contrast. That's something that I could work on if I felt the need. And then the other real main element is uh, the belt buckle. Um, I pretty much just, you know, drew this in. Uh, the falcon itself kind of overlapped the edges here, so I kind of coloured those out. 
uh, and then darkened spots, and then you get how the belt buck buckle looks here. There's a bit of depth to it. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Yeah, you get you get the sense of it here. This this clearly isn't a flat, completely flat texture here. And then in terms of other stuff, uh, I removed a lot of the uh, little buttons that you see on uh, various parts of Falcon's uh, metal things. Uh, as you can see here, you, you get these little indents here, uh, there, 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 and here. I remove those on mine. Uh, I'll grab the alpha layer of this. Uh, for an easier comparison sake, you can see here, oh, I might as well just uh, kind of highlight, uh, not in that color, that's a bad color. Like there there, uh, here, where else, that little spot there, these, and uh, this little thing here, this is all just little, the little like nuts that he has on his uh, Little nuts that he has on his uh, on his boots, so I remove those just to kind of clean it up. And then again, I uh, did the same with uh, the the uh, the main blue normal map. I just realized I didn't really elaborate properly on uh, what I did with the leather texture. Obviously, again, using a layer style to overlay it, and then I did various little touch-ups uh, with this to adjust its contrast and stuff. Uh, a slight Gaussian blur, I believe I applied to it. Uh, and then, yeah, just all that kind of stuff. Adjustments in the brightness of contrast. Not really contra, uh, not really that one, but yeah. All right, and those are pretty much the primary things uh, that you need to understand, or that one hopes to understand, in order to create better textures. Um, as a result, I will probably. Uh, throw something together here. I have no idea how this would look. No, we got our we got our lemon falcon. Oops, wrong texture. With the smiley faces. A good way, that I forgot to mention before, a good way if, you, uh, if you're able to quickly import and export stuff in-game, a good way to understand where parts of the texture map are, are to draw a load of lines, uh, draw, draw a load of like, vertical lines if I make a, a different layer. Draw a load of colored vertical lines. So I'll do a red one here. Uh, I don't know, blue, uh, orange one. Yellow. And wh what have you. Y you guys get the idea. And then, uh, from there, Basically, what you do is 
you look at it in game, see how the lines map, and that will give you a general idea of where stuff is. So for the time being, I guess we can just mess around with what we have here. Um, again, using the various tools that we have at our disposal. We'll work on here. What color to make this? Um, and yeah, this is another thing, and just in terms of uh, just in, in terms of making nicer textures, just understanding good uh, color complements and contrasts. I'm gonna make this uh, like a purple, I guess, but like a more faded purple. That should be good. That light purple is kind of nice. This texture here is like the cuff. I'm going to make this darker. A uh, hue more around this. Oops, I selected more than I wanted because of my magic wand uh, tolerance being a bit too high. So this is one of those instances where you want to lower the magic wand tolerance. I had it at 32. Let's try lowering it to 16. 16 is nice. As it means that it didn't bleed into this yellow texture here. Obviously, lower tolerance generally means a little bit more in terms of selecting stuff, but that's not too big of a deal. There we go. Uh, I forgot to select this. There we go. I'll make this... Uh... That should be good. So inside the collar, so I'll yeah. apply similar color changes that I did to uh, there. It's probably not exactly the same. If you want it exactly the same, what you can do is eyedropper here, uh, this, and then there. Now those two colors exactly match. Alright, so in terms of editing something like hair color, uh, obviously that's not in uh, that's not a problem for Falcon. But for certain characters, uh, their hair color cannot be edited via texture edits. They have to be done via material or vertex coloring. 
Unfortunately, I'm not particularly adept in doing this. I kind of know the process. Or at the very least, I know how to, you know, get everything set up. The problem there is, uh, the problem is from there, it's kind of understanding what exactly you need to do in order to edit them. That's where it gets a little bit more complicated. Because all the values are kind of confusing. You technically don't need 3ds max in order to uh do material editing you do need it for uh, vertex editing and vertex injection but not for material editing material editing uh the only reason why you need to use max is so that you can refer to the uh object names because uh yeah but you don't actually do any editing for the materials in uh, 3ds max Okay, so this is all for his belt. What color do we... No, that's for his... Uh... Wait, what is that? That's not his belt. I'm being stupid. No, this is for his, like, his secondary belt. Because obviously, as I said, uh... He has two belts. That's good. And then these are the little straps. Uh, this is also part of his belt, this here. So you kind of need to... Uh, this and this. Actually, I'm not sure about this one, but I know this one definitely is uh, part of his belt. Uh, not shown there. This is incorrect. but it's only uh, this little section. It sucks that you can't really see his belt in the render. That's uh, the main awkward thing. It doesn't really matter if you uh, bleed into the white space, by the way, uh, as long as you're not overlapping what is clearly part of the texture. That kind of thing is okay. This is for his holster. I'm gonna make this golden as well, as opposed to, uh... Close to purple. I don't know what that is. What is this layer? Oh yeah, yeah. That's the thingy that I was working before I can delete this layer.
By the way, I apologize if it's uh, if I'm not answering your questions, uh, stream chat. Uh, it's only just for the sake of you know keeping this as an accessible tutorial for uh, YouTube watches, because otherwise, uh, without context, it doesn't make sense. But I will answer your questions at the end. I promise you. Uh, I should probably elaborate. This skin that I'm making isn't for anything. I mean, if you really want it, you can... I guess I could... Make, make it an actual thing, but... This is just a dumb skin. Just a, a test, so to speak. For educational purposes. So let's copy this onto the back as well. Uh, let me first color over the falcon. body layer I guess So, yeah, <laughs> and as I was doing before, I was uh, removing the stuff on the back of here. And what we can do is uh, merge these into one layer. What we can 
do is move these into here. That's probably slightly incorrect positioning. Uh, you want the positioning to be exact so that... Uh, yeah, that's definitely incorrect. It's too low. I mean, a way you can make this exact is to uh, copy and paste the uh, this on relative to uh, the faces. This will allow you to make them exact. So let me merge these layers temporarily, then drag this into uh, drag this into here. I'll make this at the front, and then I will shift these so that they're in the exact position. Not quite. A little higher. That should be perfect. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so now we just want to get rid of this. Just delete this. It doesn't need to be here. Undo the merge. Uh, grayscale these. Uh, wrong layer. This isn't how you want the map to look. Um, so let's say the only bits that we want to have a bit of depth, I guess, are the eyes and the outline. So, uh, if we overlay this, let's see how it's done on the Falcon. Yeah, it's only really the outline that's defined. So we want to delete all the inside stuff. Yeah, let me delete all the inside stuff. I've got a plan on how to do this. Alright, so. A nice way I think we can do this is... If we... Use both a... Color overlay... Or just some kind of overlay to make these invisible as well as a bevel I'll use again a pillow emboss um, size might be a bit too big actually no that should be good maybe a bit of smoothing softening even should be pretty good then what we want to do is we want to make these uh, details invisible. So overlay is probably not the best thing to do it with. Hard light, nope. You just keep uh, exclusion should work quite nicely for this example. We can use subtract, but I think exclusion works quite nicely for what we want here. That's our crude little edit to the uh, normal map. Again, just experiment with those layer styles to see how you like it. And then of course from here, you know, I definitely recommend saving PSDs, uh, Photoshop files or whatever, uh, you know, your native editing file is. I definitely recommend saving those so that you can edit later if there's anything drastic you want to change. But yeah, that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how I go about uh, making my textures. Um, so far, I have textured, I've made 15 textures. I have textured for Cloud, Zero Suit, Falcon, Roy, Sheik, Charizard, and Mewtwo, I believe, are all the characters I've done. Uh, I have ones for Villager, Toon Link, Pikachu, and Diddy Kong. Uh, up. Uh, upcoming essentially I that's part of a series of quite specific textures uh, if you can figure out based on those characters I'll be quite impressed um, but yeah thank you all for tuning in and that is pretty much the end of this tutorial bye bye